welcome to the teleconference session of PGDMC's program. This is our second teleconference for predictive component of the PGDMC's program. Today we have three sessions. The first session will be from 11 a.m. to 11.45. The second session will be from 12 to 12.45. And the third session will be from 1 p.m. to 1.45 p.m. Today we will discuss regarding IMNCI. In the previous session we have discussed about the young infant. Today we will take up a case presentation on young infant and then we will discuss about the older child that is 2 months to 5 years and then we will make another case presentation on the older child. We will also discuss about the details of the uh, older child as per the IMSI guidelines. So if you have any questions you can start asking as and when it is applicable. Even you can fax your questions or you can telephone your questions. To discuss today we have three experts. To my right, Professor Siddharth Ramji, he is professor at Maulana Azhar Medical College. He is also a national trainer for IMNCI and has been involved in our program as a course writer, editor and also he is a counsellor. To his right, Dr. M. S. Prasad, he is head of the department pediatrics at Savdajang Hospital. He is also involved as a program in charge, a course writer, course editor and also a IMCI national trainer. To his right, we have Dr. Vidya Kumari. She is representing one of the students. She will make a case presentation for your benefit and we will be interacting how to make a case presentation in the examination and you will see a model presentation. To her right, Dr. Harish Chalani. He is senior consultant at Mol uh, Sabdajang Hospital. He is also a national trainer in IMNCI and has been involved as a course writer, editor and also a counsellor of the PGDMC's program. So to take the advantage of the experts here, I will request the students, whatever doubts you have regarding IMNCI, please ask so that we will answer them appropriately. Now to start the session, I will request uh, Dr. Vidya Kumari to make a case presentation and I will request Dr. Siddharth Ramji and Dr. M.S. Prasad to moderate the case presentation. Dr. Vidya Kumari. Thank you, sir. Good morning to today's panel of experts and all the viewers. I am Dr. Vidya Kumari, a student of PG DMCS from IGNU. Today I will be presenting a case of the group sick young infant age up to two months. The mother of the child Vikas, age six weeks, came on 21st June to our clinic with a complaints of cough and feeding difficulty for the last three to four days. This was his initial visit. Further on examination, his weight was 2.4 kg and temperature was 36.3 degrees centigrade. First, I checked for possible serious bacterial infection. There was no history of convulsion. On counting the breath, it was 70 per minute. Since it was high, Repeat counting was done. It was 68 per minute. So it's a fast breathing. There were no chest in drawing. Nasal flaring was not there. On looking and listening, grunting sound was present. Fontanelli were not bulging. There was no pus discharge from the ear. Umbilicus looked healthy. On overall examination of the skin, there were no pustules, neither there was any big boil. On measuring the axillary temperature, it was low. In the group, 36.5 degree to 35.4 degree centigrade. The infant was not lethargic and not unconscious. Movements were normal. On looking at palms and soles, it was normal colored, there was no yellow discoloration. There was no history of diarrhea. On checking for feeding problem and malnutrition, mother says there is feeding difficulty. The infant is feeding only three times in 24 hours and the infant is also taking outside feed in the form of diluted cow's milk through a bottle and it was five times in 24 hours. 
there were no signs of visible severe wasting and weight was low although this infant requires breast feeding assessment on the basis that there is feeding difficulty and the infant is feeding only 3 times in 24 hours and he is also taking outside feed but depending upon the symptoms and signs present above that is fast breathing and grunting sound the classification is severe and this infant needs urgent referral to the hospital that is why assessment of feeding is not done dr vidya can i just interrupt uh, i mean you haven't actually done the classification for the earlier so could we first go back to your uh, the first uh, serious possible bacterial infection let's understand how you arrived at the classification yes and sir. then we come down to saying because unless you do the classification for the previous symptoms it's not possible to decide whether you need to go down the box for breastfeeding assessment or not so could you could you first enumerate for us on the basis of your assessment how you arrived at any classification for possible serious bacterial infection on what is your classification and how did you arrive at that sir classification is possible serious bacterial infection on the basis that there is fast breathing because even after repeat counting the breath was 68 per minute that is above 60 per minute mm -hmm. and the second sign is grunting sound is present on looking and listening so these are all present in which box of on the red box the that red is why severe classification so if there. we actually uh, look at the red box and uh, we'll clearly see that the symptoms that she had assessed which was uh, fast breathing is visible there there was grunting there and so and what is other signs you had found other is hypothermia like 36.5 hypothermia is now is that is that also visible in this uh, red box for us no sir that is not visible no where is it visible to us where in which uh, box would this uh, sign of uh, hypothermia come the temperature looking at how much the temperature temperature is 36.3 degrees so centigrade. where will it come it is coming in the group 36.5 to 35.4 degrees so it's a hypothermia the yellow box so yes. um, how will you now handle the situation where you have signs some signs present in the red box some signs present in the yellow box so what is the principle in im and ci when we have to decide under such circumstances the principle is that if anything is there in the red box we have to consider that first right so uh, the message is very clear that when you do the assessment and you find signs in the red box the classification that we are going to use is what is in the red box even though we may have other signs present in the yellow or the green box so as dr vidya has very correctly said that on the basis of this we saw on the chart that we have a red box classification of possible serious bacterial infection uh do we have any classification for diarrhea no sir because the child is not having any history of loose motion right so we have no history of diarrhea and then you came on to the feeding and yes. uh, you made a statement that you did not go to the bottom part of the feeding assessment box which was related to uh feeding assessment yes. normally we should done that because as you rightly said there were feeding related problems yes. but uh, just to recapitulate the rule here is that if you have a child who has a referral need then we will not do this assessment and since we already have a child with a red box classification a possible serious bacterial infection so you haven't entered the lower part now on the basis of whatever little information that's available to you yes sir what is your classification because we can't still exit this box without mm. a classification yes, so sir. what is your classification based on available information to you the available informations are that the baby is having feeding difficulty baby is feeding 3 times that is less than 8 times in 24 hours and the baby is also having outside feed and uh, his weight is low for age so classification will be feeding problem or low weight so uh we have if you if you look at the actually the box here we would see that the red component of the feeding box 
has some signs which uh, the top part which is not able to feed, no attachment at all, no sucking at all cannot be assessed yes, because sir. we haven't done the breastfeeding assessment. Yes. The other two has been done by you that is visible severe wasting and very low weight for yes. age which do not apply. Yes. So we can actually safely skip and say at least, at least the classification that we can offer this child based on this is feeding problem or low weight which is what you already have. And so the sum total of classifications that we'll have, Dr. Vidya is what now finally for this child? Sum total of classification is possible serious bacterial infection. Right. The child also has hypothermia. Then second classification, feeding problem or low weight. Will you, will you, will you classify hypothermia for him? When you have in the same category, will you, will you choose a red and a yellow? Or you only I will, choose? I will choose only red. Right. So we remember we have only one classification as far as the possible bacterial infection. That is a possible serious bacterial infection. And the second is he's got a feeding problem and low weight which is a yellow box. So yeah. we have two classifications. Okay. Now having got this, uh, what is the next step that we are to follow? Next step, I have to check what immunization the baby has got. All right. First. BCG and OPV0 was given at the time of birth and now DPT1, OPV1 and hepatitis B1 is due. So what are you going to do? Are you going to administer and send the child now? Or no sir. Okay. Uh, now I will refer the child but before that pre-referral treatment has to be given. Okay. So first step would be to identify the treatment right. and then to give the treatment to the infant. Hmm. Pre-referral treatment and then will make a referral slip in that full information will be there. What so can you can you list out for us the pre-referral treatment that you've identified for this child's classification? Pre-referral treatment is injection ampicillin. Right. 0 0.5 milliliter intramuscularly. Mm -hmm. Then injection gentamicin. Right. 0 0.6 milliliter intramuscularly. Right. 25 milliliter of expressed breast milk. Right. By nasogastric tube. Right. Mother is advised Right. For on the way to hospital, how to keep the baby warm right. by giving kangaroo care right. and also covering the baby together with the mother by a sheet of cloth. So these are the identified classific, uh, treatments for the uh, possible serious bacterial infections. Now what about the low weight or feeding problem advice? What, how, how do you handle? Is there any advice you need to pick up from that box also? Yes sir, the advice is uh, already we have given 25 milliliter of expressed breast milk to prevent low blood sugar because the child is low weight. If you if you look at the what in when you have a child who needs referral sir. and there are yellow or green classifications in addition yes. then how do you identify which of those treatments need to be given pre-referral? Is there some kind of a rule about this? Rule is that from red classification treatment we have to give. That you already done. Now we have the problem of the yellow and the green. If the Normally these are not not going to be uh, advised to the child but uh, is, there some, is there some rule within this which tells you which of these needs to be identified? For preventing low blood sugar. No, let me, let me if we focus on that chart uh, we will see that the rule is that if you have all bold, if you have anything in the bold and if you go down to the, if you can focus on the bottom half of the feeding uh, yellow box, you see you already have, can you come down, yes, come, keep coming down, that's right. You clearly see that on this side there is nothing in bold, right? Yes. And if you now go right yeah. back up to the uh, possible serious back to infection, you find that everything is in bold over yes. there. Right? So very clearly there is no identified treatment that you are going to pick up from the feeding problem or low weight for this child. There is no pre-referral treatment required. Yes, on the other hand, if we can just focus on the local bacterial infection as an example, mm -hmm. let's suppose that the child had some other red classification not in the possible serious bacterial infection. Let, let me give an example. Suppose a child had a local bacterial infection and let's say the child had uh, severe malnutrition as a, pos as a classification, then you see the local bacteria infection has a bold letter right on top which says give oral cotrimoxazole amoxicillin for five days. 
which means that this is in bold. So that means the first dose of the oral treatment had to be given pre-referral, right? right? right sir. So you would have picked that up. Now suppose there is no nothing in the bold, we don't do anything. So right, that, please remember students, it's a very important thing that when there's a child who requires referral and has a classification also on the yellow or the green box for other symptoms, then look at if there are any bold pre-referral treatments which are identified, pick them up and administer them before the child gets referral. Is that clear, Dr. Vidya? Yes, sir. All right. Now there's a child requires referral. What is the next step that you're going to do? You've already identified the treatment. You have, you, let's say you administered the pre-referral treatment. Is there anything else that you're supposed to do for this child? I'll give uh, mother some advice for on the way to hospital. That you're given. Anything yes. else that mother requires? Mother requires counseling. You've already done that. The mother's accepted your counseling. How will, she, how will she reach there? What's she going to do? If she just goes there and to the, where is she going to go? How is she going to go? How will the physician other end know what's to be done? So what, what other little instrument does the mother need to carry with her or slip? She needs to carry that referral slip. Right. So we need to have a, a referral slip. So let, can we focus on the referral slip doctor, that Dr. Vidya has written up for this child, please? Right. Could you please tell us what you wrote in the referral slip? It's on the top we will write referral slip. Yeah. Then urgent referral to hospital. Right. Then we will write child's name. Right. Vikas, his age 6 week, baby 2.4 kg. Right. And then ID number of the child. Right. Then I will write classification. Right. For this child it is possible serious bacterial infection and feeding problem or low weight. That's right. Then I will write immunization status of the child. Right. In this case BCG OPV is given. Right. DPT1, OPV1, hepatitis B1 is due right. but not given. Okay. And then pre-referral treatment which has been administered at our site. Right. That I will write. Very good. Like in this case injection ampicillin. Right. 0 0.5 milliliter I am given at 10.30 am. Right. And then I will take it. Right. Second is injection gentamicin, right. 0 0.6 milliliter IM at 10.35 AM. This also will be ticked. Right. So you're going to, all the treatments that you have written, uh, given to this child, you so will write here. And then finally, what you write right at the bottom? bottom in the bottom, the on the right side, in the bottom, I will s sign, right. write the name and uh, So date please and remember place. that if you look at a referral slip, the components of a referral slip are, number one, that you need to have a heading which says this is a referral slip, you need to write the institution or hospital to which the patient is to go. You need to give some information about the patient, so the name, sex, the weight, and if there's an ID number in your hospital. The classification that you have made based on the IMNCI process. You have to also list treatments that have been administered pre-referral, advice that has been given to the mother to be carried out during transport and if there are any treatments that are due to the child but not given, for instance immunization which is due but not given, needs to be indicated so that the institution or the hospital to which the child goes knows that these have to be administered when the child recovers. And last of all, the referring physician, that is you, have to put in your name, your designation and place from where this child is being referred. So I think, uh, that, thank you Dr. Vidya, I think that was a case well done by you. And uh, you have, uh, we have gone through very quickly the process of what we learned in the previous uh, teleconferencing session. Uh, we made an assessment of the child, we got a classification, we, we recognized that when you have red classifications, we would need referral, we identified the pre-referral, looked at the component of the pre-referral slip. Also remember that when a child is being referred and has multiple <coughs> classifications wherein other classifications are not red but that could be yellow or green, look into those boxes and see is there any pre-referral treatment identified in bold which also needs to be carried out before this child goes. And that becomes the complete uh, treatment for such a child. Right? Thank you, Dr. Jena. Yeah. I'll send uh, it back to you. Yeah. Thank you, Ramji, uh, for uh, moderating the case. Uh,
Uh, I uh, think Dr. Jain, I think Dr. Prasad wants to uh, yeah. make a point. Uh, yeah, so I think I? Uh, actually Professor uh, Ramji has covered almost all. Uh, there are a few points I wanted to emphasize. One thing is that <coughs> in feeding difficulties, see Dr. Vidya has identified many. The bottle should be especially mentioned as a fetal difficulty. Use of bottle is a feeding problem. That should be uh, described. Uh, one more point I wanted to say that this child is neither <coughs> lethargic nor unconscious and accepting feeds. So instead of using the nasogastric feed, uh, the mother could continue giving breast feed on way to the hospital. That's right. And one last point is a logistic point, uh, that is a point about uh, some recording in the case recording form. There is a misprint, one bullet says <coughs> poor response. Can Harish uh, point out that poor response in the recording form? Oh no, it has been removed. Okay, so that poor response uh, bullet is a superfluous uh, bullet. It should not be paid attention to. That is the point I wanted to say. Okay, uh, thank you Dr. Prasad for uh, summarizing <coughs> and uh, uh, highlighting uh, some of the additional points. Uh, so, uh, students please uh, note the important point, the sequence in which it, the presentation was made and uh, the process of presentation because in the examination you will not get much time. Uh, so, you should uh, make to the point <coughs> and uh, highlight the important point that the examiner wants. So that in 10 to 15 minutes, you will be able to uh, cover the whole presentation and discussion part. Now, after this uh, young infant case presentation, now we will move to the next step, that is discussion about the older child, that is two months to five years uh, old child. As you know, IMNCI covers uh, two aspects, that is young infant, zero to two months, and the older child, that is two months to five years. Now, I will request Dr. Chalani to introduce the topic of older child that is 2 months to 5 years, then we will go for assessment and classification of the older child. Dr. Harish, please. Thank you, Dr. Jena. Uh, good morning, viewers. Um, last video conference, we had the assessment and classification and identify and treatment of the young infant. Uh, in this section, uh, now we will be discussing with you the assessment and classification uh, and identify treatment and treatment of the child of a age two months up to five years. Now, the broad principles remains the same that whenever the child comes to the health facility using good communication skill, ask the mother to tell about the child's age and the complaint. In fact, in the recording form, the age of the older child is to be recorded in months and similarly, we'll be recording the mother's complaint and recording the child's weight, recording the date. These are the some of the things which are we have done already for the young infant. Now, there also in the young infant, we had the first column that was checking the child's uh, for possible bacterial infection and severe jaundice. Here, you will find that we have to check each and every child for general danger signs. So, now these are the four general danger signs which we have to do it for each child and these are the first will be doing whether the baby is able to drink or breastfeed, whether the child is vomiting everything and also whether there is a history of convulsion. Now, these are the three questions which we have to ask the mother and then we will go on to the looking at the child's whether the child is lethargic or unconscious. Now, these are the things which we will show you through the video. Now, whenever the child comes to the health facility, after asking the complaints, this assessment of the general danger signs is very crucial because that will decide whether the baby will require the admission or not. So, this aspect is to be done for each and every baby and now we'll show you the video in which how to assess these four signs will be done. Can I have the video, Dr. Jenna? First, she checks for general danger signs. A general danger sign <coughs> means that a child has a serious condition. This condition may require immediate life-saving attention, such as antibiotics by injection 
oxygen, and other medicines which may not be available at the clinic. Therefore, a child with a general danger sign may need to be referred to hospital. To check for general danger signs. First ask, is the child able to drink or breastfeed? A child is not able to drink or breastfeed if the child is not able to drink at all. This child is not able to drink. A child not able to drink or breastfeed includes the child who is too weak to suck or swallow. This child is not able to drink. A breastfeeding child may have difficulty sucking when his nose is blocked. However, the child can continue to breastfeed when the nose is cleared. Ask. Does the child vomit everything? If the child tries to drink but repeatedly vomits and is not a, a child with convulsions during this illness is not likely to be actually suffering from them when you see the child. Ask the mother if the child has had convulsions during this illness. Use terms she will understand. The mother may describe convulsions using words such as fits or spasms. If a mother reports convulsions during this illness, the general danger sign is present. Next, the health worker looks to see if the child is lethargic or unconscious. A lethargic child is drowsy when the child to be awake and alert. The child will not look at the mother or watch your face when you talk. This child is lethargic. This child is lethargic. The child may fail to waken when the mother talks or when you clap your hands. Even a very young baby who sleeps a lot should respond to these sounds. If the child does not respond to clapping, shake the child gently. An unconscious child cannot be wakened. He does not respond when he is spoken to or shaken. This child is unconscious. If the child is lethargic or unconscious, the general danger sign is present. If any general danger sign is present, you should complete the rest of the assessment immediately. So there will be no delay in the child's treatment. Okay, friends, so you have seen the assessment of a child for the general danger signs. The important message which we have got that any child who has got the presence of the general danger sign we have to finish the assessment fast and then we have to take the appropriate action of referring this child to the hospital now in the there are some key points which have to be remembered in the general danger sign that you have to differentiate vomiting everything from recurrent vomiting when the mother comes sometimes she says that the baby vomits each and everything that is the thing which has to be taken as vomiting everything and if the, there is some doubt actually then you can give water or some fluid in front of you and see whether the baby is vomiting everything and similarly the history of convulsion is to be asked in the language in which the mother understands now if you see can we have the focus on the chart actually that having assessed for the general danger sign we will assess the child for the four main symptoms irrespective of whatever is the complaint of the mother. So we will assess for the cough or difficult breathing. Then we will ask the mother does the child have diarrhea and then we will can we have the go down yes then we will ask does the child have diarrhea and then we will ask does the child have fever and then we will ask for does the child have ear problem and 
then it is a next box is compulsory box checking the child for malnutrition anemia and immunization and not forgetting the last box assessing any other problem which the baby may be having so this basically sometimes because the mother may complain the particular symptom for which she is most bothered but we have to ask all these four main symptoms and if the mother says yes then we have to make the assessment of that particular box and making sure that assessment of malnutrition and anemia is compulsory and immunization so we will move on from here to the next box so that is the assessment of cough or difficult breathing dr jana please yeah. uh, thank you dr chalani for nicely summarizing uh, the general danger signs now we request dr prasad to tell us that how will you assess a child with cough or difficult breathing dr prasad please thank you dr jana <coughs> uh dr chelani has already given uh, the good presentation of how to assess and classify well in imnci for assessment i am telling you there are only four four tools you are using one is the ask second is the look third is the listen and fourth is the feel so these four tools you are using in all the assessment and in your case recording form as well <coughs> as in your chart booklet wherever the word check is there that box is compulsory so whatever complain whatever presenting symptom is there you have to go into that box now coming to this uh, box of cough or difficult breathing in this box you have to enter only when the mother says child has got cough there is a question that does the child have cough or difficult breathing if the answer is yes then only you have to enter in this box otherwise you have to skip tick mark the no and skip to the next box of diarrhea so if the answer is yes then again you have got ask look listen and feel in ask you have got only one question for how long this cough or difficult breathing is present in look listen and feel you have to count the breath in one complete minute you have look for the ch- you have to look for the chest in drawing and you have to look and listen for the strider uh regarding this uh, count of breath in 1 minute in older children we are counting only once but in young infant you remember that if it is elevated we are repeating the count to confirm the fast breathing here you, we are counting only once chest in drawing the difference from young infant is that in young infant you were looking for severe chest in drawing but in older children any chest in drawing if present it has to be recorded so depending on this when you complete this you do this uh, you get some signs and depending on signs you do classification and as usual as you did in young infant we always start from the red row that is the severest classification try to look for signs in the red row if it is present classify as given in the red row if not then come down to the yellow row if not then come down to the green row so so how to do this assessment completely we will watch the video you can appreciate better whatever i have told how to assess this thing can we see the video after checking for general danger signs continue the assessment by asking about the first main symptom Ask. Does the child have cough or difficult breathing? If the mother replies yes, assess the child further. A child with cough may have pneumonia or another severe acute respiratory infection. You must be able to identify the few children with pneumonia among the many children with coughs or colds if the child has a cough or difficult breathing <coughs> ask for how long it's important to know how long a child has been coughing as a chronic cough lasting for more than 30 days may be a sign of tuberculosis asthma or whooping cough 
Determining whether a child has fast breathing is an important step in assessing a child with cough. Fast breathing is a sign of pneumonia. Count the number of breaths the child takes in one minute. When a child develops pneumonia, the lungs become stiff, making it more difficult to breathe. The child's breathing rate increases as the child's body tries to make up for lung stiffness and low oxygen. Because children's breathing rates slow down as they get older, the child's age must be taken into consideration when deciding whether fast breathing is present. To decide whether a child has fast breathing, you will count the number of breaths the child takes in one minute and compare it with the following cutoff rates. If the child is aged two months up to 12 months, the child has fast breathing if you count 50 breaths per minute or more. If the child is aged 12 months up to five years, the child has fast breathing if you count 40 breaths per minute or more. The child who is exactly 12 months old has fast breathing if you counted 40 breaths per minute or more. We will now watch while the health worker counts the number of breaths this seven-month-old child takes in one minute. Look for the breathing movement anywhere on the child's chest or abdomen. If you are not able to see this movement easily, ask the mother to lift the child's shirt. <coughs> the child should be calm when you watch the child's breathing. If the child starts to cry or becomes upset, ask the mother to calm the child again before counting. The health worker is now ready to start counting the number of breaths in one minute. You may practice counting with her. We'll tell you when to start and stop counting. Select an area on the child's chest where you can see breathing movement. Prepare to start counting. Start counting now. Stop counting. How many breaths did you count? The health worker counted 90 breaths per minute. Since the child is seven months old, he does have fast breathing. Look for chest in drawing. This child has chest in drawing. Next, Look and listen for stridor. Stridor is a harsh noise made when the child is breathing in. It sounds like this. Look 
to see when the child is breathing in. And then, since the noise may be difficult to hear, listen for stridor by placing your ear near the child's mouth. Breathing in, breathing in, breathing in. This child has a harsh noise on breathing in. This child has stridor. If a calm child has stridor, the child is in danger of a life-threatening airway obstruction. Sometimes, you will hear a wet noise if the nose is blocked. Clear the nose and listen again. Or you may hear other noises when the child breathes out, such as wheezing. These are not stridor. Often, a child who is not very ill will have stridor only when the child is crying or upset. So be sure to look and listen for stridor only when the child is calm. That completes the assessment for cough or difficult breathing. Now you have seen the video of the cough and difficult breathing. We will discuss the details of cough and difficult breathing after the tea break. Now we will have a break for 15 minutes. Please be with us. We will be back again at 12.05. Thank you. Yeah,